Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 40 of my podcast. What? Episode 40! Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to any new viewers, and a big welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you. Thank you for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. And I love spending time with you every week. Today is a nice and rainy Friday here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you should totally go check out and join if you want to and you haven't yet. That is where you'll find the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's also where you'll find giveaway stuff and knit along stuff and a bunch of other fun stuff. We do have a knit along happening right now. It's been going on for a little while and we've got a couple more weeks left of it. It's the deep dark night cow and it's dark and it's creepy and it's wonderful and it's nighttime and I love it. And you guys are knitting and making such amazing things. It's a make along. You can do anything you want. And um, thanks for participating if you have. And if you haven't yet and you want to check it out, Go to the Ravelry group, check out the chatter thread. That is where all the information is going to be, and you definitely still have time. Um, in the coming weeks here, I will be drawing prizes from the FO thread, so keep an eye out for that. And I am having so much fun with it. Um, I love what you guys are making. Keep up the good work. And we do also have a hashtag running on Instagram if you feel like joining in on that. Um, it's just a casual thing that I started. It's hashtag Ottoman Sweaters, and I want to see everybody wearing their handmade sweaters this autumn. So take a picture of yourself wearing one of your sweaters and uh, put it up with hashtag Ottoman Sweaters, and we can all join in together and wear our sweaters together, and it's so much fun. Okay, so that is all that. You want to know what I'm wearing? I am wearing my Agnes top. This is a Tilly and the Buttons sewing pattern, and I love it. Agnes is one of my very favorite sewing patterns of all time. It's awesome, and I love it. And this version is got has got spider webs and roses and bats on it. I don't know if you can see any of the bats, but I think that's one right there. I love it. I love this top so much. And the sweater that I'm wearing is the Featherweight Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. And this was knit out of Imperial Yarns, a woolen spun sport weight, and it's super warm and wonderful, and I love it. And all the information for these patterns will be in the show notes, so check them out. You want to know what I'm working on this week? Moving right along, apparently. Is that it? Really? Okay, so my whips. I've got a few things that I've been working on this week. Not without their stories, because I'll get, I'll get there when I get there. <laughs> um, first thing I've been working on this week has been behaving perfectly. I love this project so much. It is living in my Nightmare Before Christmas bag with my spooky cat pin on it, which will be one of the Deep Dark Night prizes. Deep Dark Night Cal prizes. They're my Igdras mitts. This is a fingerless mitt pattern written by Ellie of Skein Deer Knits, who is an amazing color work pattern designer on Ravelry and podcaster. I love her and she is wonderful. And she designed these amazing mitts that I'm super duper in love with. So these are the Igdras mitts. This is my first one. It's almost done. I'm done with the body of the mitt. I just have to do the thumb and do all the weaving and blocking and all that jazz. I love it so much. It fits so good. Okay, so this is my first mitt and it's amazing. I mostly follow the pattern. I did make a couple of alterations that I will talk about. Um, but first I'll tell you that I am using Knit Picks Palette and Knit Picks Palette is a Fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks. It's a two ply, perfect for color work kind of yarn. Um, so, this one, I'm using one skein of each. That's all I have is one ball of each. This one is Peony. This is my main color. 
Here we have my secondary color, I guess, my main color work color. <laughs> this is seafaring and then this is serpentine. This is like the accent color. And I love these colors together. They are very 80s, 90s, fantastic to me. And I am really, really enjoying this yarn quite a bit for this project. So the needles that I'm using are, I'm doing this on Magic Loop. I'm using a size zero for the cuff and a one and a half for the rest, most of the rest of the mitt. And I'm using my carbons. And so I used a German twisted cast on. The pattern calls for something else. Some other kind of cast on that I can't remember right now. But I looked, I Googled it while well, I YouTubed it to like get a tutorial for that cast on. And to my brain, it looked like the German twisted cast on. So that's what I did. I think it might be the same thing. I don't know though. There could be like a subtle difference that I'm just not seeing. But um, so I did a German twisted cast on and a two by two rib for the cuff. Now, one of the alterations that I made was I added just a couple rows of stockinette in the main color before going into the color work. And I also did not switch needle sizes until I actually got to the color work. So this whole little section here where it's the solid main color and these first two stripes, I kept it at a size zero. And then I went up to the one and a half for the color work. Color work is beautiful and so freaking fun. I did make a, like two little tiny mistakes in the color work and like some of these little in-between bits here. There's like one of these little things that doesn't look like the how it's supposed to look, but you know, whatever. Whatever. I'm 14, so I say whatever. And, um, the color work was so much fun. It went by so fast. This mitt was so quick to knit up. Um, and then this is the palm color work. And I just think it's gorgeous. And it was so fun. Here is the awesome thumb gusset that I love. And I love it. So this top little section of color work here um, is really cool and I love it. And I did do one more alteration to the pattern when I, I added one row of plain stockinette in the main color, the pink, before going into the ribbing, which the pattern doesn't tell you to do, but it's something that I like to do on socks when I'm doing a contrasting cuff to the main body, main color of the sock. Um, instead of switching from the contrast color to the main color right at the part where you start doing stockinette after the ribbing, I do one extra round of stockinette in the contrast cuff color so that you don't get a combination of knit pearl bumps right at the base of the ribbing, if that makes sense. So that's what I did here. I just did one round of plain stockinette after the color work in the main color before going into the cuff in the main color. And that just made it so I don't have any blue pearl bumps at the base of the ribbing, which is a super subtle thing, but it's something that I just like to do that I stole from my, my sock knitting skill set. And then the only other thing I did was I made the cuff a little bit, the top cuff a little bit longer than the pattern called for because I wanted to. And yeah, that's everything I did. Like I said, super quick, really fun. Color work is so much fun, you guys. And this is my little star progress keeper from Charmed and Dangerous, who has an Etsy shop, who I love. And my second one is those are some empty needles. These are my one and a half that I haven't started using. My second one looks like this. So I just have the cuff done so far and I still have them on my size ones. I've done a couple rounds of the plain stockinette in the main color and then I am gonna start doing the stripes and the color work soon. So this will go by super fast. I love these mitts so much. 
I cannot wait to knit more of Ellie's patterns because I'm enjoying this one so much. And I'm, I mean, I feel like once you, get, color work is like brioche. It's one of those techniques that once you do one thing in it, you just like, or at least me, I just like get obsessed. Like now that I've knit these color work mitts, I'd want to knit like all the color work. And she's got some amazing color work patterns out right now. So I would be willing to bet we'll be seeing more of her patterns in my future. Um, so these are coming along. I really, really love how they're turning out. The fit is really good. I talked last time about how I had knit these once in a smaller needle size and they were too small. And so I ripped it out. I ripped all the color work out and then re-knit the color work on a larger size needle, which is my one and a half, um, as opposed to the zero. I mean one, as opposed to the one that I had originally knit them on. And at the one and a half needle gauge for this yarn in this color work pattern, I am getting the exact correct gauge pre-blocking for the smallest size called for in the pattern, which is working out gloriously. They fit so good. So this is the preteen size that I'm doing. Yeah, I am an adult, <laughs> but I have preteen sized hands, so it's perfect. Um, I love these so much and I can't wait to get the thumb on here. <gasps> ah, okay, so that's enough of that. Love them. Oh, let's put this away. I don't need to wear my hoe during the whole episode. So the next thing that I've been working on has been my thrift store scarf. So this is living in my fat squirrel project bag. And this is a pattern that I'm just making up. It's like really basic and really simple. It is a scarf knit in the round with chevron stitch. So let me tell you about the yarn that I'm using first and then I'll talk about what I'm actually doing. The one that I'm working with right now is this Imperial Yarns Air and Weight Woolen Spun 100% wool yarn. Really pretty teal color. It is the Columbia Base. And it's actually, okay, Woolen Spun, I don't know. It says it's two ply mule spun. I, I don't know what that means. I never heard that before. So maybe it's not Woolen Spun, it's Mule Spun. If you know what that means, let me know. So here's their tag. I love Imperial Yarn. They're an amazing company and I really like what they do and I really like their yarn. This is them too. So this cake is winding down. I've got less than half of it left and I will tell you my intention later. This is the next one. This one and this one are both custom mill spun natural yarns that were gifted to me in a yarn swap ages ago. Actually, not that long ago. It was last year sometime. <laughs> um, and let's see, what do we got? Okay, so the dark brown is CVM and Cormo, and the lighter oatmeal color is Coriadale. And this is really, really beautiful yarn. It's like a worsted, Aaron, heavy worsted weight, and they're gorgeous. The last one that I have is this Studio Donegal, soft Donegal, in this really, really pretty lavender tweed yarn. It's gorgeous, I love it. I got this at Stitches West 2016. And here's the tag. This is Irish yarn. And I really love it. So this is another Aran weight. My plan for this is to kind of color block it and stripe in between the colors. I cast on, well, this is my third time knitting it because I'm experimenting, because I'm making it up. Right now I have it on a size 10, which is perfect. I originally cast on with a size nine and I wanted a looser gauge. So I cast on with a size nine originally 
some stitch count that I don't remember, but it was too small, too tight, too little stitches. So I ripped it out, I cast it on again with a bigger stitch count but with the same needles, ripped that out. Now I have the biggest stitch count with the size 10 needles and I really like it now. I believe I've got 84 stitches. I should have written it down. I think I said that last time. I think I said last time I should have written down my stitch count. I don't know what the stitch count is. I forgot. But I will put it here. How about that? Um, so I cast on some number of stitches on a size 10 using the German Twisted Cast On because it's my favorite. And I'm just doing chevron. Now when I showed you last time the original one that I had cast on, I was doing the type of chevron where you increase with yarn overs and so you get the eyelet holes. Uh, I decided I didn't really like that, so when I recast on, I am now doing just knit one, knit front to back, knit front and back through a stitch to increase one. So I'm doing the increases like that. My decreases are still the center double decrease, and I am really liking it so far. It's a really thick, really nice, squishy fabric, and it's in the round and it's just gonna stay a long tube. It's gonna be a really long scarf and I'm gonna put fringe on the end of it. So I'm gonna save some yarn from each color and do like a mixture fringe, I think. I don't know how long these four yarns are gonna make this scarf. I want a really long one. So if I use all these yarns and it's not long enough, I'll just add in some new yarn. I have a ton of scrap like worsted weight yarn. So I'll dig through there and see what I want to add on if it's not long enough when I get to the end. So this is all this is, is just chevron in the round for ages. I'm almost to the point where I'm going to start striping the teal with the next color, which is going to be the dark brown. And, oh wait, is it going to be the light brown? Yeah, the light brown. Light brown's next. And uh, I really like it. It's, oh, this yarn just feels so good. It's so natural and squishy and lanolin-y. I think all of these yarns, Maybe we, yeah, with the exception of this one, are super lanolin -y. I love them. So I'm knitting these on my Knit Picks wooden interchangeables on their 16 inch cord. Their 16 inch cords are longer than a lot of other ones that I've used. And I think it's just because the needles are so long that this is like super long. This would be way too big for a hat for me if I was to use these needles for a hat. Anyway, I love this project. Um, it's super basic. I will have all of the notes for this project in a Ravelry project page. So if you happen to want to copy me or do something similar, I'm gonna write everything out at some point. Maybe not right now, but at some point I'm gonna write everything out um, in terms of what I'm doing and you can use those if you want to. So I enjoy this project quite a bit. And the next one is my Marl Magic. I'm not done with her yet, but I'm getting close. This is my Gasly's project bag. So here she is. She still looks like a big blob. <laughs> and I talked last week about how I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do the large size or the medium size, and I've decided I want to do an in-between size. So for the large size, you take the thing and you add one section on each side at the bottom. Now what I think I'm doing is adding just one of those sections to one side and not the other. So here. Here she is. Here she is right now. And this section that I'm working on right now is this bottom wedge. So there should be this wedge and a wedge down here too, all along the bottom. But I don't think I'm gonna do this wedge. I think I'm just doing one wedge. So I'm making it bigger on one side and not the other. I don't know if that's gonna turn out super weird, but I think that will work best. I don't know why I do stuff. <laughs> why can't I just follow the instructions? I don't know. Because I have to make stuff up. So 
This is the last section that I'm working on. I am almost done with it. I have mostly used some Madeline Tosh Euro Sock, which is my favorite of their bases. It's 100% superwash high twist fingering weight wool. And it's in their light bright colorway, which is a highly speckled, super crazy yarn, and I love it. Now the other one that I was holding it double with is my Mild Envy color, which is a light mint green. Now I ran out of both of those, so up here I switched to some light gray, fingering weight something, and uh, get, not Gashley Crumb. Yeah, Gashley, no. Fig Bash. <laughs> the Fig Bash colorway of Woolen Vine Yarns, which was some leftover from my Oracle Shawl, which was designed by Kristen of Woolen Vine Yarns. So I was using those two in this last section here, and I am almost done. And when I was working on this last section, a couple nights ago, I was also imbibing in some beverages. So I was knitting on this, and next to me, on a little table, I had a cup of tea, like hot tea, and a tumbler of bourbon. I know that's a super weird combination, but that's me. I had a cup of water, a cup of tea, and a glass of bourbon. <laughs> and that's what I was drinking while I was knit working on this. And all of a sudden, I don't know how this happened. I have no idea. I'm working on the thing, and my yarn is like off to the side like this. And I'm like, what? Where's my yarn? Like, where are my little yarn balls? I had like a little yarn ball like that big of each yarn at the end of this, and I look over, and one of my little yarn balls is in my tea, the whole ball, and the other of my little yarn balls, the fig bash, was in my whiskey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> they were sitting right next to each other, and there's just like this little ball of yarn in each of my beverages. I have no idea. So I just snapped him off and threw him away. There was like that much left of each one. I just like, just like what? <laughs> anyway, so now I'm out of yarn and I have to just pick two new colorways to finish this thing off. It'll just be a little wedge of two other colors, but I don't even know you guys. I don't even know. That's what happened with that. So that, I'm not done with this yet. <laughs> I stopped working on it at that point and I was just like, okay, obviously I need to stop. I just need to put this down and work on something else. So I did, but this is almost done. After I'm done with this wedge, I am going to, don't drop your stitches off the needle. We're good, we're good. After I'm done with this last wedge, I am going to do the I-cord bind off, which I am super excited about because I love I-cord bind offs. I love doing them, I love the way they look, I think they're awesome, and I can't wait to choose the colors that I'm gonna use for the I-cord bind off. So that's gonna be coming up soon. I'm over my, um, my shock as to <laughs> the uh, incident of the whiskey and tea and my marled magic. So now I can work on this again, and I seriously still just can't wait to, for it to be finished because this thing is going to be awesome to wear. So that is that. That is my weird tale behind the Marled Magic. My last work in progress is a new cast on. <gasps> so this is the Mount Pleasant top or T, one of the two. It's the Mount Pleasant. And it's a really, really gorgeous top pattern. It's got like cut off sleeves and a lace hem and it's a crop top. And I'm so excited about it. I have been seeing this top floating around and I've been seeing all the finished objects and they're just so gorgeous, I cannot resist. And I felt like I had the perfect yarn for it. So this is, yeah. Greenwood Fiber Works in the Yakety Yak base, which is 60% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, and 20% Silk. 
and it is in the Paper Roses Pink colorway. And this yarn is really gorgeous. It's my, I don't often use like these luxury bases that are like super silky and drapey, but I just thought this would be perfect for this top because I feel like that's exactly what this thing needs. So here is her tag, Greenwood Fiber Works. She does sell on Etsy. I bought this yarn at the Black Sheep Fiber Festival in Oregon last year. And I usually see her at all the wool festivals that I go to, um, which is has only ever been Black Sheep and Stitches West. So I had one skein of this, and initially I bought the pattern thinking this was a one skein thing, but there's 400 yards in this skein. And the pattern calls for like 460 something yards. So I was like, should I go for it? Like, should I risk it? And I generally use less yarn than called for in a pattern. But what I did is I went on Ravelry to see if anybody had the same base in the same colorway that they have used in projects that I could just like see if they, I could buy their scraps from them. I did find um, some of that, not a lot, like not a lot at all. Um, and I haven't heard back from anybody that I messaged, but I did also message the dyer on Etsy to see if it, like a custom order was something that she could do. Like if I do run under yarn, can I get this same base in the same colorway again and just buy a second skein? And um, the color lots would be different, but really that doesn't bother me. I have a feeling that if I need a second skein, it's gonna be for like, the neckband and the sleeve bands, which are just the ribbing. So if that's off, I think that's okay. Um, and I don't even know if I'll need it, but we'll see. So she messaged back like right away and said that she can always do custom orders. So that's great. She said too, that if I told her the dye lot for the yarn that I have, she can just see if she has any still in her inventory. Um, so that would be cool. She's checking right now. She hasn't gotten back to me yet, but if she did have that, I would just snag it right up and have that on hand. So this is what I have so far. I have got the cast on done and one repeat of the lace pattern. So that's what the lace pattern looks like so far. And it's so fun. So this is one of those lace, one of those lace patterns that is really easy to just know what you're doing on the whole round and just go without looking at the chart. And it's a really easy, really simple, fun lace pattern to do. I enjoy it very, very much. Um, this, this project, to me, has officially made October knit everything twice month. I think literally, with the exception of my Marled Magic, which is the most well-behaved project I have right now. Everything this month has been knit at least twice. Everything, even, okay, so you know how I have no socks this week? <laughs> um, no, my spousal socks were fine. They're, they're just, they haven't been worked on. But my other socks that I was working on last week, the whiskey bound and hell bent colorway, self-striping brown, those got ripped out. And I'm gonna restart them. My spousal hat got knit like three times. Everything else on this episode has been knit at least once. This, you wanna know what I did? I twisted my stitches. That thing that everybody tells you, join in the round, make sure you don't twist your stitches. Yeah, I did that. And I didn't notice until I got one and a half lace repeats in. <sighs> so, um, this was last night. I was so proud of myself yesterday because yesterday before work, I cast this thing on. And then on my lunch break, I worked on it my whole lunch break. And then after work, I knit on it again for like a while while watching knitting podcasts. It was super fun. And I got one and a half repeats in. And then I looked at it and it was a Mobius, which just means instead of being in the round straight up, like straight up in the round, you got a top and a bottom. There's one twist in it and it's twisted. 
So <laughs> ripped the whole thing out. I recast on. And uh, now I'm back on track. I am super back on track. I've got one full repeat done. And I really love it so far. This yarn in this pattern is just working up so gorgeously. Uh, I love the needles I'm using. They're my Haya Haya interchangeable set. Right now I've got it on a size 4. And then for the stockinette portion, it'll be a size 5. And I did swatch for this. And what I did for my swatch is I did my swatch in the round, just a little tube. And then instead of binding off, I just put waste yarn in the live stitches and kept it attached to the ball and soaked my swatch with the ball over here and uh, blocked it on a mat like normal with no bind off, which is the live stitches on holders and um, measured my gauge. And then I ripped out my swatch and I rewound it on here. <laughs> and I did that because I knew I was gonna be playing yarn chicken and I didn't want to waste any yarn even the amount of yarn that it would take to cut the yarn and then reattach it to itself. So I just I just did a swatch and left it on and then unwound it after I was done measuring. And now this is my swatch. <laughs> so that worked out perfectly. I've never done that before. And I was like, kind of like, oh, I don't know. But yeah, it worked great. I loved it. And I got gauge. Gauge was perfect. So yay. And I'm super excited about this top. Like I said, the lace is super fun, and I'm excited to get to the stockinette part because I love a good stockinette in the round. And I love this color, you guys. It's so pretty. The sheen on this yarn, the drape of it, the feel of it is so gorgeous and silky and smooth and soft. And this color in this yarn is just so gorgeous. It's, it's a really deep mauve. It's a really purpley deep, kind of warm toned mauve. And I love it. I think it's going to look awesome over a dress. So that's my new cast on. It is a top and I love it. It is living in my fake leather project bag. Yes. Seriously, October has been knit everything at least twice a month. I, I feel like October is cursed. I love, you know what? October is my second favorite month, and I think it's mad at me that it's that it came in second. So I think this is its revenge on me. It is cursing my knitting. But <laughs> that's everything I've been working on this week. Um, I do still have some other stuff that I have not touched, including my even flow cardigan, which I do really want to get back to. That's another thing that I have to re knit. A whole big old part of it but um I'll get there I'm not ready yet even though I really really want that sweater it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. okay yep that's it for everything I've been making I wanted to give a big huge thank you to everybody who showed up and supported the shop during last week's update um, I did do a day where I donated a, a portion of my proceeds to the United Way of the Wine Country, which is doing a relief fund for the fires that are happening in Santa Rosa, California right now. And thanks to you guys and your support, I was able to donate a pretty good little chunk of money to that foundation, to that fund. And I, I am super grateful. Thank you guys so much for showing up and helping and to support the shop and to allow me to make a little bit of a contribution to that fund. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope if you've ordered yarn that you've gotten it and you love it, and I hope you knit something awesome with it. Okay, on to favorites. I did get some stuff in the mail. I got a little pile right here. So I made a couple little purchases and I'm really excited about them. So. I bought some enamel pins from somebody who I follow on Instagram who I love and adore and I've never ordered from her before. Um, but she was doing, okay, so it's Oplesiosaur who is an amazing enamel pin maker. She does pins inspired by nature, but not just like pretty nature. She does like weird nature. She does all the like little, she does like these prehistoric like bugs and stuff. I love it. I love what she does. So she was doing a day 
where all of her seconds, like all of the kind of slightly imperfect pins were being sold at a discount and all the proceeds from that went to a charity. So I bought a couple of her seconds, including, this is the thing that made me go over the edge and just like place an order. It's a little snake and I love snakes, you guys. I'm the biggest reptile fan in the whole entire world. And look at this little snake. And it's like some snake that's native to like, or not, I don't know if it's native, but it's some snake that they're all over San Francisco and that's kind of local to me. And I love him. I love snakes so much. So this is my new little snake pin. And then I also got this mermaid who I think is gorgeous and I love her so much. So that's my mermaid. And then this one, this wasn't a seconds, I just could not not buy it. It's a T-Rex in a Fair Isle sweater. Right? So this is Oh Plesiosaur, these are mini pins. And I realize all my project bags, most of my project bags are like, you know, some crazy cute fun fabric, so they're like super busy. So I don't know what I'm gonna put these on yet. I think I'll probably put them on my like fake leather project bag because it's all a solid color. Maybe, I don't know. I need to have like a pin spot for all my cool new pins. I love them so much. Check out her shop if you're interested. Seriously, she makes like amazing things. And look at her business card. She is so cool. Okay, so this is her business card. And that little, I think that's a plesiosaur. I think it's like a prehistoric like dinosaur water guy. <laughs> He's got a little heart on his belly. That's her logo. And then the back of her business card is a plesiosaur and there's instructions to cut it out and make a little 3D paper plesiosaur. She's amazing. Oh my gosh. Love it. Love it. Okay, so the next thing I purchased was another little set of needles. I've been on a needle kick lately. So I went ahead and got some Chiagu Twist minis and I got a size zero needle tip and a size one needle tip, which is somewhere else right now. And I also got the 22 inch mini cable, which makes a 30 inch or 32 ish inch thing with the needles on it for Magic Loop. That's my favorite size for Magic Loop. I also accidentally bought the 30 inch cable, which makes like a 40 inch Magic Loop thing needle when you have the needles on. Um, and that's, that's with the size one right now. Zero? I don't know. So I got a little set. I've got a size one, a size zero, and a 40 inch and a 30 inch cord. All of the Chiagu Twist Minis. And everyone is totally right about these. They're amazing. They're amazing. Best sock needles ever in my opinion right now. I just started using them so I don't know, I could be exaggerating, but I love them so much. I cannot wait to knit a million pairs of socks on these puppies. Can't wait. Okay. Last thing I got in the mail is my new issue of making. So I have a subscription to this magazine. It's a quarterly publication and it's called Making and it's issue four, which is the lines issue. And there's some cool stuff in here. I honestly don't know if I will make anything in here. <laughs> I actually haven't knit from any of my making magazines yet. I've made one sewing pattern from one of them once. Um, and the knitting patterns are really gorgeous. A lot of the times there's, I, I think it's mostly that they're just kind of not my style or they've got elements that I don't want to do. For example, one of the knitting patterns in here I do really quite like, but it's knit in pieces and I ain't got time for that. I know, I know it's terrible, but I don't, I just don't want to knit things in pieces like garments. I just don't want to, so I'm not gonna, but I really do like this vest. And if I were to knit it for myself, I would shorten it so that it's not so long, but I love it, but it's knit in pieces and I just don't want to, I just don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to. Uh, there are some lovely shawls in here, a lovely colorwork cardigan. 
Um, but I don't know. It's beautiful to look through. There's recipes in here too. There's sewing stuff. There's stuffies in here. Um, check it out if you haven't yet. You can go on Ravelry and check out this issue and just look at all the knitting patterns that are in it. They are really, really gorgeous. Um, to me, this is kind of a coffee table magazine. I really don't know how much I'll actually make from it, but we'll see. There's, I mean, there's like also stuff like this, just like needlework stuff. So yeah, there's like, I don't know. I'm not gonna make rock covers, but they're cute. <laughs> um, also, there's this rug pattern in here for like latch hooking and latch hooking is something that my mom kind of does sometimes. So I might show this to her. So anyway, this is a really gorgeous magazine. It is put out by Matter, who is Carrie Bostic Hogue, who is a knitwear designer that I absolutely adore. I love many of her patterns. Um, look, it's nice and thick too. It's a fun read through. So I was excited to get this in the mail, and that is all the stuff I got. It's been a fun week. So those are my favorites. I showed you all my knitting. And that's pretty much it. So I am going to leave you there this week. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic week and weekend. Thank you so, so much for watching and spending time with me. If you enjoyed the episode and you want to give it a thumbs up, that would be cool. Or if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to be kept up to date on future episodes, feel free to subscribe and have fun and stay awesome. Bye, you guys.